Hello, I'm Michael Stoll. Welcome to the JPEV Gala, and thank you for joining us. I want to thank JPEV for the work they are doing to keep the partisan stories alive for generations to come. I'd like to introduce my granddaughter, Suzanne Walla, that I love greatly. One of the main things that has, has really impacted me in, in knowing my Zeta's past, my Zeta and, and his family, they fought back to save their lives, but they also saved countless other people along the way. And the legacy there is in knowing that it's important to fight back for anyone or any group that's oppressed. It's our duty to do that as Jews. I'm Ted Weinstone. I'm 92 years old. I'm honored to be at the JPEP Gala. Welcome back, everyone. Memories are easily erased. And if we don't set them on paper now, we never will. My name is Zachary, grandson of Ted, our grandfather, our survivor, and our family is always strongly identified with our partisan and survivor heritage. We're glad that JPEF is here to help tell the stories of perseverance to the community and future generations. We've got an excellent program for you this evening for myself, Zachary, my brother Noah, and my grandfather, Ted. Uh, thank you for being here and enjoy the evening. Thank you, Michael and Ted, and your grandchildren, Suzanne, Zachary, and Noah, for the warm welcome to this year's Jewish Partisan Educational Foundation Gala, Perpetuating the Legacy. It is an honor to share this virtual stage with you. I wish we were together in person this year so I could personally thank you for everything you have done. I'm Mitch Braff, and in 2000, I founded JPEF. Since then, we have reached millions of students all over the world with our innovative educational materials and programs. I'm incredibly proud of our work and want to thank all of you for joining us this evening. You make our success possible. Now, a little bit more about our host. At 17, Michael Stoll escaped a transport train bound for a Maidanic death camp. He joined the Belsky Partisan shortly after, going on crucial missions to gather food and supplies. Committed to sharing his story of hope and survival in the forest, Michael has spent decades telling his experiences to thousands of students. Ted Weinstone was only 12 when he was forced to work in a Russian labor camp outside Baranovich. Escaping into the woods, he joined a group of Russian partisans. Being so young, was not, he was not allowed to fight. Instead, he contributed as a guard who joined the group on ambush missions. Ted has also helped JPEF bring a broader history of the Holocaust through the sharing of his partisan history. Thank you both and to all the Jewish partisans who continue to impact generations through their inspiration of hope and resistance. Tonight, you are going to meet some incredible students and educators impacted by our work. We're also honoring two extraordinary people, Dr. Michael Berenbaum, a world-renowned Holocaust scholar who has been working with JPEF since its inception, and Stephen Holm of Blessed Memory, a man who had a beautiful heart and was a leader of JPEF's New York community. I know his mother, Rose, who was a partisan, is watching now. Hi, Rose. It is now my pleasure to introduce RMC, Mark Feuerstein, who played Isaac Malbin in Defiance. Have you never used a hammer before? Uh, no. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Mark Feuerstein, and I am so happy to be here tonight. And per that clip you just saw from the movie Defiance, I want you to know I have since learned how to use a hammer. Okay, I'm a handy Jew, all right? Now I have to tell you, getting to be a part of that movie was such an honor as both an actor and more importantly, as a Jew. I mean, I got to help tell the story of the largest rescue of Jews by Jews during the Holocaust. I mean, the Bielski Brigade was one of many partisan and family groups that made up the roughly 30,000 badass Jews who fought back and survived against the odds. I actually remember when Ed Zwick called me in to discuss possibly being in this great movie. And of course, I came in with a lot of ideas of which roles I should play. I said to him, Ed, I mean the role of Tuvia Bielski. That's a great part. I would be very interested in playing Tuvia Bielski. He said, yeah, Daniel Craig is going to be playing that role. I said, oh, James Bond. 
yeah, no, he's good. I, uh, you should probably go with him. So then I said, okay, but the younger brother, Zusha Bielski, that's, that's a great part that maybe I would be right for. He said, yeah, we're going to go with Liev Schreiber on that role. I said, oh, Ray Donovan. Yeah, he's good too. He's good too. And then Ed said to me, Mark, I would be so honored if you would consider the role of Isaac Malbin, the intellectual. And at first, I was having a little trouble remembering who the hell Isaac Malbin was. But eventually, I realized that he stood for the great tradition of pedagogy. And since this is JPEF, the Jewish Partisan Educational Foundation, I am now, years later, deeply honored to have played a teacher in such a groundbreaking movie. Somehow, Ed Zwick had the foresight to know that in 2008, Someday, I would be the MC for this great teaching organization. And so, it was beshert. It was meant to be. Now, before we show our first video of the evening, I wanted to briefly explain who the Jewish partisans were. During World War II, approximately 30,000 Jews, many of them teens, escaped the ghettos and camps and formed or joined armed resistance groups. These people were called partisans, and they saved thousands of lives and destroyed thousands of Nazi trains and convoys. JPEF exists to make sure the world knows of these contributions, because an understanding of the Holocaust is incomplete without the inclusion of the Jewish partisans. Like many of us, I didn't have so many examples of truly tough, badass Jews. I mean, sure, we had Mel Brooks, Larry David, Jackie Mason, Oliver Sholem, not the toughest, okay? You got Dr. Ruth, Judge Judy, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Actually, the women are actually tough. The men, not so much. The point is, I could have used the image of these incredibly tough Jewish partisans when I was studying with Rabbi Einsiedler at Parkey Synagogue in New York. Instead, we hear mostly about the perpetrators. You know their names, all of them. And then our portrayal is mostly as victims of this tragic episode in history. But rarely, if ever, do we hear about the Jews who, in the face of total annihilation, continue to defy and resist by reading Torah, speaking Hebrew, observing Shabbos and the holidays. There was so much resistance, beautiful resistance. There are tens of thousands of our ancestors who challenged this stereotypical notion of the passive nebish. They resisted. They didn't accept this horrendous status quo. They took action as partisans. Ordinary people in extraordinary circumstances who found the strength to fight back and survive against all odds. For me, learning about this missing piece of Jewish history was transformative. And because of the curriculum and projects that JPEF creates, millions of students in more than 28 countries are able to have that same transformative experience. Partisans were able to save thousands of lives. And because of their heroic resistance, by some estimates, there are over 400,000 descendants alive today. I mean, you talk about Lador Vador. That's Lador Vador. Lador Vador, Lador Vador, Lador Vador, Nagid Gadlecha, Lador Vador. My father's quelling right now. Or he's mortified. Either way, hi, Dad. JPEF puts innovative curriculum directly in the hands of educators. It allows teachers to create lessons that are a catalyst for students to grapple with complex issues. JPEF inspires through lessons of Jewish teen empowerment. As one student told us, if they could be so brave in the situations they were in, I too can always be the bravest version of myself. That's what JPEF is all about. But don't let me tell you. Let's hear directly from the students and the educators. Everyone is entitled to knowing the story of the partisans because it changes you for the better. It redesigns the way you think about the Jews during the Holocaust as victims because that intense campaign sparked in a lot of people that intense strength. I want my students to learn about the partisans because it's a, a story that really gives a vivid sense of both survival and resistance. And that when people say that Jews didn't fight back and didn't resist and that we went like sheep to the slaughter, that that's not true. 
this curriculum allows me to let them actually get to meet some of the people who survived this and not just as survivors but also as resistors. Until I was 13, 14, I didn't know that anybody fought back. And that's not only an important part of history, but an important fact of life. I just thought that everybody suffered. Like Paul Strassman, whom I did my project on, he deserves to be not only recognized, but his story deserves to be told for what he did. It's a huge impact for people my age to learn about other people my age and to have these great examples of like people being so like powerful just as teenagers. It's really kind of like a guide to like how powerful we could be as adults in the future. There's more to survival than just basic needs. We have to look at all the things that make us humans and we can't just let those things go. Those stories are the stories that will uh, inspire us. And these are the stories that hopefully in the younger generation will stay with us as stories of inspiration and resilience. And the Jewish Partisans Education Foundation is doing it so well. To me, JPEF and the history that it preserves and that it helps to teach allows me to teach my students Jewish history that makes them feel good about themselves and inspires them and lets them know that one person can make a difference. There were human beings who were able to do something so influential and so powerful when there aren't any more partisans and survivors to tell their story. We need those testimonials to keep the story going. And I think it's so powerful to hear it from someone who lived through it. It definitely teaches a lot about kind of the merits of taking on risk for what you believe in. And I think also ties in with the larger history of the Jewish people. And whether it's, you know, Hanukkah or Purim or the Holocaust, it's kind of the story of pushing through and maintaining community and tradition in face of oppression and not letting that make you compromise yourself or what you believe in. I love that video. I love what that last boy Ben said about not compromising yourself or what you believe in. And we're really living in a renewed time of activism now. The late John Lewis talked about getting into good trouble and we all remember the image of Abraham Joshua Heschel marching arm in arm in Selma with Dr. King. We have this tradition of being upstanders, not bystanders. That's what the partisans were, and that's what this generation of kids is becoming. Jewish and non-Jewish, they are becoming upstanders. It's hard to believe that all of this started just 21 years ago with one Jewish partisan and a filmmaker in search of a good story. And boy, did he find a good one in Murray Gordon. At 15, Murray escaped from a ghetto in Lithuania, linked up with Russian partisans, and by 16, he was blowing up Nazi trains. Mitch was blown away. He'd never heard such stories. They didn't teach this stuff in school, and he wanted to make sure that they do. Mitch's initial goal in creating JPEF was to film documentary-style interviews with surviving partisans, creating educational material and distributing it to schools. Here we are, two decades later, and JPEF now has a library of 54 Jewish partisan testimonies, 12 HBO-quality documentary films that people, including my dear friends Liev Schreiber and the late Ed Asner, narrate. I hope I get to narrate the next one, Mitch. Through JPEF's partnerships with over 60 Holocaust educational organizations, they are able to distribute more than 20 classroom-ready lesson plans and a host of amazing resources for educators. Now nearly every major Holocaust center in the world, from Cape Town to Krakow, uses JPEF's materials. Key to JPEF's impact is the role of the first-person accounts by the partisans themselves. These experiences had previously only been told within partisan families. JPEF has created a platform to share these important experiences worldwide, including those of Bielski partisans, Leah and Velvel Johnson of blessed memory. Leah and Velvel lived in the forest together, fought together, and survived together. 
Their strength, fortitude, and determination to survive lives on in their son Murray and grandchildren Zev, Tanya, and Ariel, all of whom have made a lifetime commitment to bringing these same values to the larger community in their home state of Texas. Shalom, y'all. As a young child, I always felt a little bit different since most of my friends were not of Holocaust survivor parents. And it made me feel proud that my parents had saved so many families, especially my father. As a young partisan in the mid 1940s, he was only 23 years old. His family was completely decimated by that time. And his main aim was to save as many Jewish families as possible. And those families that he saved, their names will carry on for generations to come. My grandparents had to fight so hard to, you know, some people lost their whole family, some people survived with their family, but it's something that, you know, has been instilled in me at least to, you know, have a strong sense of who your family is. And our grandmother was so positive. And I think that's a lesson that's important for all of us. We really took it upon ourselves to educate others and make sure our story was told and it lives on and on and on so that it doesn't die with the partisans who are unfortunately passing away. I think this story is essential, an essential expression of someone's identity and existence. When they saw my Bubby, a blessed memory, old, not old, she was just joy. She was just not survival, but thriving. Not just survival, but expressing the ultimate element of life. When my bubby would come speak, I think people would get the sense, students in particularly, I am needed for something greater than myself. She's this small old Jewish lady, and they look at her and they go, what? She could never have done this. She could have never fought for herself. But they see how tall she stands. They see how proud she is. And they see that really anything is possible. And she really met, spread that word on to other people that no matter how little you might think you are, everyone has a purpose in this life. And even you have a purpose and even you can make a change. As my mom got a little bit older, in many of her speeches, she would always end off by saying, know your history. Know who you are. You are the future. Stand up for what is right and never give up. And that same spirit lingered on with me. It made me feel that there's a legacy that I have to carry on with my children. And it made me feel that you have to know who you are, know where you came from, instill that in your children, Go forward and be proud of who you are. So you may not know this, but the people you just saw, Leia and Velvel Johnson, were actually married in the forests of Belarus, which for me evokes memories of that amazing wedding scene in Defiance. I don't know if you remember that scene, but there were these amazing Kazatsky dancers who, for me, really brought that scene to life because I just love a nice Kazatsky. Actually, Kind of makes me want to dance right now, you know, to honor the partisans. Hava Nagila, Hava Nagila, Hava. I hope my mic isn't showing. Uh, again, Dad, I can only imagine how proud and mortified you are of what you just saw. But I was really struck by how such joy, such joy could live alongside such tragedy. That is the power of the human spirit and ultimately the power of the partisan legacy itself. The bonds that formed in the forests, in addition to the many that formed afterwards, led to generations and generations of Jews. Again, Lador Vador Nagid Gadlecha, like Rose and Joe Holm, who were partisans in a group in Poland. A product of their wonderful bond that they formed in the forest was their wonderful son, Steve Holm, of blessed memory and his sister, Gloria. Stephen Holm was committed to carrying on the legacy of his partisan parents and instilled the same commitment in his children, Andrew and Elizabeth. He connected deeply to JPEF's mission. Together with Deborah Lee Charidon, he was a trusted advisor to JPEF, as well as a philanthropist and stakeholder who helped raise critical funds for JPEF's work. Steve passed away in 2019. I know from everyone I spoke to at JPEF that he was a wonderful man and is greatly missed. JPEF honors him tonight 
as a true champion and presents his family with the Lev Arie Award. Steve embodied the heart of a lion, so it is fitting that tonight he should be honored with the Heart of a Lion Award. JPEF is an organization that Deborah and I became involved with in about 2005. It is the sole organization that we're aware of that has gone out and made it its mission to teach the legacy of the partisans to the next generation and the generation after that. He was an extrovert. He would uh, be very friendly. He would, you know, make people feel comfortable. And uh, I think he, you know, what came out of those things was usually his energy, his sense of humor, his devotion, all those qualities that are Steve. And I'm wearing this cast to garner the sympathy vote tonight, especially when we go to the fundraising few minutes that we're gonna have a little bit later on. We both knew that that story of the partisans and that resistance was a story that wasn't told very often. And Steve's involvement with it and his caring about it is like he did everything else in his life. Full force, you know, full heart. It's like everything else he did, like with his parents and I think with his children and his work. When he, when he was involved and he wanted to get something accomplished, he gave it his all. So that's part of his legacy of, you know, wh how he was as a human being. He rebelled a lot as a kid against a household that was more disciplined. And as a parent, he had a very different philosophy. His parenting philosophy was that nothing that I ever experienced in life was supposed to shock me. When he became a grandfather, he was suddenly on the floor rolling around with kids, making silly faces, honking their noses, tickling them. He loved that. Steve is all around is a very beloved person, whether in business or in socially, uh, in family. And in later years, when he lived in the city and his parents lived in the city, he would go to their house for breakfast every day. I mean, I don't know anybody else who does that or did that. I was talking to one of his um, longest serving clients recently. He was saying that two years after his death, he still can't get through a transaction without asking himself, what would Steve do in this situation? He would always give you the extra mile, go the extra mile, do what needed to be done to accomplish the goal. And that, you know, that was in work, and I think, you know, in just plain life. One of the things he really connected with was the idea of being resilient and how important it was to be able to dust yourself off, get back up, and try again. And when I think about some of the more challenging periods in my life and his life, I'm in awe of his ability to keep pushing, to keep going, and I see it in my grandmother Rose as well. I marvel at that strength and that resilience, and I think it's a wonderful lesson to carry on. Even those of us who are children of the survivors, survivors are now becoming Alta Cockers. And it's so important, really important, for our children and grandchildren to carry on the legacy. I remember how much he looked forward to hosting the JPEF Gala a few years ago. I think some of it was about wanting to honor his parents, and especially my grandmother who was there for it. But I think a lot of it had to do with how much he cared about the cause. I think it's an appropriate award, the heart of a lion, because he had a big heart, and he had the roar of a lion. He, he had the heart to, you know, to, to do what he had to do, and he loved, and he's a very loving person, but he had the, the roar and the ability to, to be tough and to do what needed to be done, and he was not afraid of being who he was. And I love him very much, and I miss him. I really miss him. He was a big presence. And uh, there's not another Steve around, that's for sure. On behalf of my sister Liz, my Aunt Gloria, Deborah, my grandmother Rose, I want to thank JPEV for giving my father Steve the Lev Arya Award. Even if he probably would have turned it down because he wouldn't have liked being the center of attention, JPEF has been a tremendous influence in his life and in our family's life. And we're really appreciative of this recognition. Wow, he was quite a man. And speaking on behalf of the entire JPEF community, I want to say we really miss him. 
Benjamin Levin, of blessed memory, had a wild streak that served him well before and during the war. While it's true that Ben knew his way around the forest, which was a great asset, and that he went on missions to destroy bridges and to gather food and ammunition, he will be remembered by countless high school students as someone who taught them what it means to do the right thing and to always make life better for others. Now let's meet Ben's son Chaim, his wife Randy, and grandchildren Amanda and Zachary to learn how Ben's legacy inspires them. He worked in a gas station most of our life and he was totally unassuming. You would never expect that somebody so unassuming would have such a rich history. The craziest thing about his story was how young he was. The fact that he was a 13 year old kid at the time making these decisions is honestly uh, unthinkable. Um, so there are times where I reflect on that, and he always had this incredibly positive attitude. He had the saying, that's life. Even when you're going through hard times, it's the idea that that's life, and I can get through it and, and persevere through it. He taught me three really important things. He taught me what it means to be um, important and, and be valued in a family situation, and his family was always the most powerful, the number one thing in his life. And the second thing is tenacity. It's going the long haul and showing up for that over and over again. And the third piece is really legacy. And it's not just the legacy he's left behind. It's the fact that he lived it every single day. This very, very positive outlook on life, and especially vis-a-vis -vis children. He really felt strongly that if there's any meaning to his experiences and his accomplishments, they need to be shared with children. And we, for many years, spoke in front of elementary schools, high schools, and the kids loved him. They loved him because of his energy. They loved him actually because he was short and unassuming. He didn't have the bearing of a big war hero. He had the bearing of an ordinary person. I remember in one school, the principal came up and hugged him. And, looked at me and, and said, this is a real hero, first hero I've ever met in my life. And I, I was really moved. I think what he and the partisans demonstrated was that you always have a fighting chance. No matter how much the odds are stacked against you, you always have a shot and you should always fight for, fight for that shot. I felt, you know, a sense of pride that, you know, that was part of my family's history um, and something that, you know, I would always be with me. In thinking about how I would share my grandfather's story with future generations or perhaps my own children, I think I would focus more on the character of my grandpa and who he was as a person um, in my life and the impact that he's had on so many people in terms of sharing his story and how he went about that and my, how my dad partnered with him and took that as something that was so important to him and in our family history and wanting to share that with other people. What I would share with future generations is how his experiences in the Holocaust and his survival story molded the person who he would become and who I would personally know. Also highlighting the importance of protecting and sharing Jewish history, whether it is giving speeches at universities and, and high schools or just understanding our family roots and what we came from and the importance of knowing that history and using that history to uh, make further uh, decisions to protect those values and protect your Judaism and understand what we went through and that we are a family of fighters and, and perseverance who have come so far. So Ben and his family are from Jersey, right? East Coast Jews, which reminds me of my favorite scene that was cut from the final edit of Defiance, which actually took place across the river in New York City. So in the original draft of the script, there were these bookends, kind of like in Schindler's List, and it opened on a Park Avenue businessman hailing a cab. He gets in the cab, he sits in the back, and he sees the hack license of the cab driver, and his jaw just drops. We cut away to the forest of Belarus. We tell the whole amazing saga of the partisans living in the forest and fighting and stealing and surviving. We come back to Park Avenue and we see that businessman in the back of the seat and he, and he says, you're Tuvia Bielski. 
It's because of you that I have my wife and my children and my grandchildren. Thanks to you, I have my life. And I don't know why Edswick cut it. It was so brilliant. Maybe he just wanted the whole film to take place inside the forest. Whatever the reason, it was incredibly moving. And what was most profound for me about those bookends was the realization that that random Park Avenue businessman in the cab could have easily been my grandfather or any one of your grandfathers. I mean, look at how one person can make a difference. And because of people like that, there are 400,000 descendants of the Jewish partisans. Because of men and women like Tuvia Bielski who stood up and made a difference. Amazing. JPEF has been making those same types of connections for millions of young people throughout the world each year through an international network of more than 30,000 educators. We could not do this without your generosity and support. JPEF gets no government support, and individual donations make up 85% of its budget. I think you know where I'm going here. We need your help. We need all of us to join together as a community and support this important work. The money raised this evening will allow JPEF to continue expanding our reach by bringing the legacy of the Jewish partisans to students and their educators throughout Israel, meeting a long-standing demand for our materials in Hebrew. By raising $36,000 tonight, double high times a thousand, we will be well on the road to translating our lesson plans, study guides, and website into Hebrew for use with millions of Israeli students and the Jewish immersion program of the Israeli Defense Forces, the IDF, who are excited. They're excited about including education about the Jewish partisans in their course of study. How cool is that? JPEF is the only organization in the world that puts partisan education in schools. It's very important for these students to be able to spread the word of the partisan story and be able to fight anti-Semitism. Join me and my family and donate today. Come on, to my family who's watching, yep, dad, uncles, aunts, cousins, don't make me look bad, okay? Shell it out for the tough Jews tonight. So you just click on the donate button to the right of this video. You can even make your gifts in honor or in memory of a partisan, honoree, or family member. If you can make a donation before the end of our program, your name and dedication will appear in the chat feature and all gifts will be listed on the event website. So on behalf of JPEF staff and the entire JPEF board, I want to thank you for your generosity. Tonight, as we perpetuate the legacy, we realize how critical it is to preserve and celebrate the individual histories of these remarkable people as we mourn two partisans who recently passed. Faye Shulman, of blessed memory, did not just leave behind her personal legacy as a Jewish partisan who fought with a Russian partisan group. She was also the only known Jewish partisan photographer who captured partisan life in the forest. Her remarkable photographs show atrocities, yes, but also the rare side of partisan life. Funerals, reunions among friends, and those Jews who hid in the forest in family camps. Without her work, the world may never have known the full impact of partisan resistance. JPEF developed a traveling exhibit of her work that is still exhibited around the world. She passed away in April at the age of 101. Judith Ginsburg, may her memory be a blessing, a partisan combatant with the Rachinsky Otriad knew that educating the next generation about the resistance and resilience of the Jewish partisans was essential. It began with her own children and grandchildren and continued with Judith speaking in numerous classrooms and synagogues. Reaching the children was so important to Judith and to the entire Ginsburg family that in 2019, they established the Judith and Marvin Ginsburg Jewish Partisan History Education Fund with JPEF to enable many new teacher trainings. To date, more than 3,300 educators impacting over 20,000 students have been engaged through their generosity. Judith passed away just last month at the age of 96. So thanks to a chance meeting in a Los Angeles restaurant between Larry King, Oliver Sholem, and JPEF founder Mitch Braff, 
Larry became engaged in their work and went on to narrate several documentary films. He also used his star power to help with outreach, participated in JPEF fundraisers, and served on JPEF's advisory board. Acclaimed actor Ed Asner was JPEF's first narrator, narrated several JPEF films, and emceed a JPEF gala in New York in 2011. His first cousin Abe, whom Ed loved very much, was a partisan, and his work with JPEF was a tribute to him. As recently as last year, Ed read partisan poetry at the JPEF Rosh Hashanah event. JPEF will miss Ed's wise counsel that he lovingly shared over the past 15 years as a member of JPEF's advisory board. You should know, I had the opportunity to work with Ed Asner on the show Royal Pains. He played my grandfather. He had the biggest sense of humor and the biggest, kindest heart. JPEF and the world will mourn the loss of these two giants. Now, you may not know this too, but Ed and I made a commercial together once in which we were dressed in animal costumes and in which I wrapped the Via Hafta prayer. You can't imagine what kind of commercial this was, but Ed, baby, this is for you. Love you, Ed. Dr. Michael Berenbaum is a world-renowned Holocaust scholar, professor, rabbi, writer, and editor. He previously served as deputy director of the President's Commission on the Holocaust and was the president and CEO of the Survivors of the Shoah Visual History Foundation. One of his lasting legacies to our understanding of the Holocaust is the establishment of the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum and the creation of its permanent exhibition. Currently, Michael is the director of the Siggy Ziering Institute, exploring the ethical and religious implications of the Holocaust at the American Jewish University here in Los Angeles. He is a proud member of the JPEF Advisory Board and has been an invaluable contributor, writing and reviewing curriculum for JPEF since its founding. The generosity of his time and incredible knowledge, not only to JPEF, but to scores of Holocaust organizations, is legendary. JPEF is honored to present him with the Lev Arie Award. There are all kinds of people that he has moved at their very core, away from stupidity, ignorance, fear and anxiety. There is no limit in his moral vision of who deserves to be protected in human dignity. I don't know a Holocaust organization, and I'm sure I'm wrong, but I don't know a Holocaust organization that has not worked with him and has not felt the impact of his kindness and his academic abilities and his scholarly abilities and his creativity. Michael has a very big mind and a big heart to match. And, uh, you know, I think one of the things that really stands out about Michael is how much his Jewish values and traditions mean to him and the way he leads his life as a teacher and a friend, as a curator, uh, whatever role he is in. And in the hope that Americans will learn from this museum the need to remain vigilant against bigotry and oppression. When he came to our project, he brought such a unique combination of talents and experiences. And he was a key leader in that effort, helping to take all those discussions and arguments and really propel them forward into the acclaimed exhibition that you see today. We put together a team of uh, a movie maker with a, a museum designer, with me playing the role of historian and sort of um, storyteller. We put together that with all the support apparatus uh, that was necessary. And then we created this incredible museum. And he came with this idea of living museums that need to change your life by getting inside your guts, your heart, your soul, so that the never forget becomes never again. 
I think if Michael had only worked for the Holocaust Museum, we would say Diano. It was a pretty extraordinary contribution, uh, but he went on to work with the Shoah Foundation and then to become a consultant for Holocaust museums and centers uh, throughout the United States and abroad. I went from the Holocaust Museum to work for Spielberg on the Survivors of the Shoah Visual History Foundation. And all of a sudden I had this incredible opportunity to let survivors tell their story. And I think that's one of the greatest contributions he made was with the Shoah Foundation to tape over 52,000 interviews of people that have been told, shut up, live with your loneliness, your anxieties, your fears, your worst terrors. Uh, he turned that all around. One of the um, joys of being at this stage of my career and of my life really is the fact that if I can help others to do their work, I feel um, deeply rewarded with that. He's really been a role model for me in so many ways, and I truthfully can't imagine JPEF would be where it is today with the impact we have today without Michael's help. His generosity and his insights and advice has made every single piece of curricula better that we give out to teachers and to students. His you know, fingerprints are on everything we do, and it's better for it. The Holocaust is absolutely not complete unless it includes Jewish resistance. So there are thousands of ways of becoming an upstander. And when you probe the character, and this is what you guys do so bloody well, when you probe the character of what did it take to stand up and to resist, those are human characteristics that we have to learn to emulate that we have to learn to embody, and that we have to live and manifest in our lives, in our very being. Michael is the consummate upstander. It's not just focusing on the Holocaust, which is so important, and teaching us all to stand up and make a difference. These are things that he really lives by in his actions. And this is inclusive of even smaller things, like he is single-handedly responsible for bringing kosher hot dogs to Dodger Stadium. He worked five years on this. I mean, who else would do that? But he's really trying to make the world a better place, and he's an incredible role model, and he's become a really dear friend, and it means so much for me on behalf of JPEF to honor him with the Lev Arie Award. It's something so well-deserved, and I know that his career is gonna to continue to blossom, and he's gonna to continue to make huge impacts around the world, and more millions and millions of people will be affected by his good deeds. So I'm actually a huge Dodgers fan myself. I mean, Yankees first, always, of course. But, you know, I live here, so I also like the Dodgers. And I was actually at one of the playoff games in October at one of their spectacular losses, leading to them not at all being in the World Series, which they're not. But I had no idea that the hot dog I had during the seventh inning stretch was kosher. And I have you to thank for that, Michael. Thank you for that delicious dog. In fact, they were so good, I actually saved one of them. Right, right here. It's been a month, but I love them. I mean, they're, they're kosher and still delicious. The legacy of Philip and Ruth Lazowski is twofold. First, resistance is not just about fighting. Saving lives comes in many forms. Like when Ruth's mother, Miriam, claimed Philip, a complete stranger, as her own child after he was separated from his family in the ghetto. He is alive today because of this act of kindness and bravery. Secondly, regaining the ability to believe in miracles. That's because in 1953, less than a decade after surviving in the forest, a chance conversation at a wedding led Philip to reunite with Miriam, the woman who claimed him as her own years before. He was also reintroduced to Ruth Rabinowitz, Miriam's daughter, who he never forgot. The two have been happily married for more than 62 years, Baruch Hashem. The legacy of Philip and Ruth has clearly influenced both their son, Alan, and grandson, Jonah. The last time my grandfather saw his mother, he was 12 years old, and they were in the second floor of a movie theater that the Nazis had turned into a holding area for Jews. 
um, and the Nazis were coming in and they were taking people out and they were sending them to a mass grave. And my great-grandmother, my grandfather's mother, uh, broke open a window on the second story and she pushed my grandfather out of the window, out of the second story window. Before she pushed him out, she said three things to him. She said, I want you to live, try to survive. I want you to tell the world what transpired, what you went through, and I want you to be somebody to be able to tell the world. The lesson that I taught my kids was always to be optimistic. Even things may go wrong, but things will get better. For as long as I can remember, I might have been seven or eight, my parents have taught me anything's possible in life, and we should all never, ever give up. And when we have a chance to bring our humanity to the moment, you do it. Bringing humanity into the world, meaning to be kind to people, to hear them, to listen to them. We are the witness that we must try to teach the history of the Holocaust, the history of the partisans, what we went through in the woods in order people to learn how to survive. And God forbid this shouldn't happen, this kind of history again. Part of having this as your legacy is going out of your way to make sure that there is just love in the world or that you can add a little bit more kindness um, whenever you can. But also going out of your way to stand up for those that don't have a voice and stand up for those that can't stand up for themselves. You bring your humanity to the moment. It inspires us all uh, to believe in yourself. And I think we all need people to believe in us perhaps even more than we believe in ourselves. And I think that's really the story of the Lazowski family, Rabbi and Ruth. We, as human beings, must believe in something good. When believe in something good, good will come out. Ruth's book, Into the Forest, is so touching and so well-written. And as a thank you for everyone who donated $180 or more tonight, we will mail you a copy through the generosity of the Rabbi Philip Lazowski Family Foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, we are approaching the end of this event where in the before time, I would normally say, get your coat check ticket ready. Tonight, you can just get ready to put on your slippers and grab that turkey sandwich from the fridge. We saved a special video for last, showcasing the next generation of change makers, leaders, and educators. And to introduce this collection of young people, I want to introduce my own rock star change maker, my daughter, Lila Feuerstein. Get out here, Lila. Oh, look at her, so proud. Okay, say your thing right into there. Okay. Thinking of the partisans, I couldn't help but think of my bat mitzvah portion, Bamid Bar, which translates to in the wilderness. Like our ancestors wandering the desert in search of freedom, the Jewish partisans were forced to survive in the forest, literally, in the wilderness. It is this legacy of resilience and strength my generation has inherited. With so much going on in the world, including, including the rise of anti-Semitism, it is my generation's responsibility to stand up and engage in the world around us. I recently joined the Teen Council of the Holocaust Museum here in LA as a way to strengthen my Jewish identity and make sure the legacy of Jewish resistance is kept alive. So it is my honor to introduce this next video, which demonstrates how the legacy of the partisans lives on in us all. We're learning about 15 year olds fighting back and now I'm 17 today. And if I needed to, I could stand up for what I believed in and what was right. So instead of, you know, sitting back and waiting for something to happen, they made an effort to not be a bystander and be proactive and be an upstander. Sticking through things, especially when they are hard, and not letting that make you compromise yourself or what you believe in. I think I'm at the point where I can know that educating myself about what's going on around me is pretty much the first step to 
what has to be a lifetime of activism. And I kind of put myself in a different perspective, looking out and trying to perceive myself as a change maker with the same need to fight as Gertrude. Learning more about Etta's story really reinforced a lot of the values that are important to me. Etta was very conscious of her community and what her community needed, and that's a value that I'm really going to embrace. It made me feel like I could be a person in the world that would help other people or fight injustice rather than just another person walking in a crowd. Because these teenagers, before they became partisans, were essentially people walking in a crowd, and their situation made them had to have to adapt to be more than that. It certainly makes me think about the Holocaust differently. My hope for the legacy and the long-term impact of partisan education is certainly just that we not only have the duty, but we also have the ability to each make a change and stand up for what's right. It is inside all of us. These amazing young people so beautifully demonstrate how by engaging with the past, we can shape the future. They, we, you can make the world a better place together. I'm so proud of the work everyone at JPEF does to make this all possible. Before I hand it back off to Mark, I wanted to first thank Sherry Rosenblum, our Director of Development and Outreach, whose tireless efforts made this all happen. Thank you, Sherry, for everything you do. I also wanted to thank the JPEF board leadership, who has been instrumental in our success. Elliot Felsen, our board chair, Danny Petrosek, JPEF's vice president, Mike Grossman, our treasurer, and last but certainly not least, our founding board president and president emeritus, Paul Orbach. I want to thank our incredible gala co-chairs, Aviv and Charlie Blakeman, Deborah Lee Cheriton, Fran Ginsberg and Ed Wolf, Evan Kletter, Gloria and Dr. Larry Lieberman, and Bella Seconds, and finally our gala planning committee, Fran Ginsberg, Michael Grossman, Linda Johnson, Evan Kletter, Chaim Levin, Paul Orbach, and Sherry Rosenblum. This would not have happened without the incredible wisdom and creativity of Stephanie Berger from SJP Productions and Zayla Smith, JPEF's development, outreach, and social media associate. Thank you all. We have a great team. Mark, take us home. Thank you guys so much for being here tonight and for generously supporting JPEF and their incredible work. Together, we can do anything, anything. And there is still time to donate online. So help us reach our goal. Help us reach even more young people with the transformative history and life lessons of the Jewish partisans. Thank you for joining us. And we say, next year in Jerusalem. But actually, that might be a bit of a schlep. So we'll see you at the next JPEF Gala. And God willing, please God, it'll be in person. And we can all hug each other and celebrate the Jews and the partisans and our people. Good night, everyone.